All right, folks, welcome back to the dev Twitch stream. My name is Nick Taylor. I am a lead software engineer at Forum. Forum is the software that powers dev. Uh, today, I'm here with Ben Holmes, creator of Slinkity. Ben, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you That's doing? That's awesome. That's awesome. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, for folks who might not know you, who you are, you mind just uh, telling us who you are? Sure. Uh, I'm Ben. I use whatever framework looks the shiniest, and I've been doing <laughs> front-end dev for a while and just jumped into open source for the first time with this project that we're going to demo today. I actually learned how to NPM publish in July of last year, or June, I think. Um, nice. So interesting first choice in a project. It's been, it's been fun <laughs> ramping up quickly. but That's cool, cool. Awesome. So... Yeah, so we're going to talk about Slinkity, which is the project you created. So I guess my first question is, how did Slinkity come about? Yeah, I mean, it started with, um, well, it's been going for a while, I guess, in one form or another. I've kind of unofficially built and rebuilt Slinkity five times over before I published anything. Um, okay. But it started when it, this was like beginning of pandemic, I think. Um, where I thought, I want to rebuild my personal site, as we all do. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I want to challenge myself to not use any frameworks at all. Okay. Can't use component libraries even, but I want like a single page app. I want it to be, have like nice animations between pages. Um, and it needs to like pull in Markdown to all the content management stuff, or at least in a basic way. Um, okay. So that was a long time of learning all the node file system APIs. And I know mm -hmm. far too many of them now in the weirdness <laughs> with promises in common JS. Oh my God. But yeah, yeah. Um, it was enough to learn like really, here's what SSGs are and here's how they work. Um, and then I eventually stumbled on 11D like, oh man, this is solving a lot of the problems I was trying to solve myself uh, without having any opinions about what you use. You can use liquid, Dunjux, markdown files, yeah. any template really. Um, and the sole purpose of 11D is um, basically rebuilding Jekyll, if you've used that before, where you store data somewhere in a CMS, mm -hmm. in some like files, in a data folder, whatever you want, and then rolling that data into some content with whatever template that you want. So okay. it's the most bare bones way to build a site, and you can extend it as far as you want, really, to manage styles and component frameworks, as we're going to check out today. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of... Crawling through source code, realizing all the possibilities, and slowly <laughs> building more and more things until I realized this is kind of its own package, and we'll see where yeah. we can go with bundling and such. Cool. And so I, I see your your famous whiteboard behind you, and so like you said, this is built off of Eleventy, but I see you got Views, Felt, React. Pretty much, it looks like uh, based on that, it looks like you can kind of integrate any framework components within Slinkity? Is, is that how that works or? That's pretty much it, yeah. And um, okay. this is actually the whiteboard I use for like weekly update logs. It's like okay. the way we share release notes. We don't actually have an official change log, which is kind of funny, <laughs> but uh, this is the one that unofficially exists and try okay. to be as transparent about like, here's our roadmap uh, as we can. So this is yeah. like what I was mentioning yesterday of like, here are some things we need to fix with production builds and our canary after we demoed last week. Um, and I can actually check this okay. one off now. We fixed issues with Vue and Svelte so that we can sort of check that out today. And some minor okay. issues with React we're still working on. But yeah, as you said, it's like um, we're introducing a sort of plugin ecosystem. Uh, it's kind of a plugin okay. within a plugin now uh, where you can <laughs> slot on React, Vue, Svelte, lit elements, solid, uh, extending as far as you want. Um, okay. Similar to a tool called Astro, if you've heard of that one before. Um, we've yeah. kind of uh, taken a lot of inspiration from them, like looked at the way they set up their plugin setup and sort yeah. of ported it over in a nice way to work with 11 So okay. you can kind of plug and play any component you want um, and treat it like a template to build a page. You can also insert components into your pages. So if you have some markdown right. files already set up and you want to insert a little React component or a Vue component, we give you primitives for that as well. Okay. Um, and it's all powered by Vite, uh, which has been talk of the town for sure. It's a very cool yeah, yeah. way to sort of bundle anything, really. 
Um, it's the first bundler that's like easy to configure anything in existence. Um, so a lot of stuff fast. I could talk about there. Oh, it's fast. Yeah. It's also fast for styling. Um, and this is something I've been trying to like be pretty clear about is like Slinkity is not a way to add JavaScript to 11 D well, it, it can okay. be, but it can also be a way to like, just manage all of your assets. Like if you want to okay. set up SCSS or stylus or any other styling language that 11D doesn't help you with out of the box. We just okay. give it to you for free, where it's like, insert a SAS file and you're good, because Vite can compile okay. anything. Um, so it's really a way to just automate compiling everything inside of 11D, from JavaScript okay. to styles to more templating languages. Anything that you can strap onto Vite, we will help you with. OK, that's, that's really cool. I, I always laugh at myself when I think of Vite because because uh, I'm not French Canadian, but I live in Montreal, so I'm bilingual, so I speak French. And I never clued in, like, Vite in French means fast. And I it, I never clued yeah. into that when I was first reading it. I was like, what's this Vite project? So then after reading about it, I, I was know. Like, okay, yeah, I that makes a lot too. more sense. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I th didn't you have origins in a, a, either French or another language? I think that's, like, Whoa. why the theme was extended. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, because like in French, like like Vue, V U E, like the name of the framework. It's like, it's like Vue. It means I saw something. So I guess it's a play on displaying Ooh. something. I'm I'm just I, I'm just reaching here. That's I a could thought. be completely wrong. I don't know. Guess. Maybe the origin was like it's a, yeah. it's to create views, but we need a different spelling. Something. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, maybe, the V lives that's on. The, that's the important yeah. part. Maybe that's that's how we should be following frameworks now. If they if they use any kind of French references, we know it's going to be a good framework potentially or build tool. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Um, They're cool, one cool. for one, at yeah. least. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so we got eleven. We're we're not going to dig too deep in eleven T today. I don't think. Uh, I mean, we can for sure. Like I know, uh, I'm no. Uh, super expert in 11 but I do run my own blog with 11 So I'm familiar with some of the stuff there. Like I see you have short codes and partials on there. Um, I guess that's how these, th that's kind of like, I imagine what the glue would be to get these other mm -hmm. components in. Um, maybe just speak to that a bit if you could. Yeah. Um, well, I will say like, you kind of have to dig into 11 to use Slinkity because we've okay. made the sort of decision that Slinkity is not going to be some meta framework that you wrap around 11 until the end of time. It's trying okay. to be just something you slot into your existing 11 workflow. So like if you already have an 11 project, uh, there's a couple gotchas that are very small and we're documenting okay. them. But you can add Slinkity to that 11 project with no rewrites whatsoever. Um, oh, okay. And you just kind of slot it in. And uh, we give you a CLI tool to run instead, but we use the same okay. CLI flags. So if you're used to a set of CLI flags in 11 you just copy paste them onto the Slinkity command. It's the same okay. thing. Uh, we actually want to remove the Slinkity CLI in the future and just use 11 for everything. Um, okay. But in the end, it's like Slinkity just gives you, it unlocks compiling your styles and compiling components inside of your existing 11 site. So okay. no rewrites necessarily. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's definitely some glue that lets you mm -hmm. insert these component languages into Markdown, for example, using short codes, um, okay. or using components to write a page yourself. Like if you want to replace a liquid template with a JSX template, go ahead. We'll help you with that. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Now, uh, I'm, I'm familiar. I, I was reading briefly about Slinkity and, and I think it, I caught your Jamstack talk too, and I also caught i caught a couple of your talks about it this one earlier i think late fall last year was that jamstack conf i can't remember it's the one where like cassidy and yeah. jason were like in 80s clothes like lots of yeah. neon stuff. oh yeah that's that's the uh, one yeah 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 so i caught it there and I, I can't remember if you talked about it there or if it was your most recent one but uh you talk about island architectures and uh, I'm familiar with this because we kind of we use this architectural pattern in on Dev two like for forum, um, but uh, I guess maybe if you could speak to, a bit about island architectures and how that fits in with Slinkity, and and also in case folks aren't aware of what islands architecture is. 
Yeah. I mean, it's a very new term where like, if you haven't been like super in the jam stack this last year, like probably haven't heard of it. Um, but it's, it's a way, um, uh, well, the reason it's called islands is that you're treating sort of interactive elements on your site, not as mm -hmm. like the entire site itself. Like if you're using Next.js, for example, your entire site is a React component, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and you use like single page app routing to sort of choose which components are appearing on the page. But at the end of the day, it's one big React component that wraps your entire site. Um, and Islands is saying, instead of wrapping your entire site in one big component, Maybe you can just insert components into static HTML, where you're just kind of writing HTML, kind of like the good old days, but with new templating languages that are a little nicer to use. Um, yeah. And then you opt in to saying, all right, uh, if I have a marketing page, for example, and I list out all of the products on my site, uh, the list of products itself can just be a static list of links. It's not a component or anything. I just write it out with HTML or anything else. Um, and then when I get to like the image carousel that's showcasing all of the, uh, products that we have, that's something where it's like, okay, I want to hydrate a component inside of here, um, where I'm inserting a react component with clickable buttons that go between yeah. the images. Um, so you're choosing where to sprinkle JavaScript into the site. Um, I probably shouldn't use the word sprinkle because people are kind of scared by that word. It's like, <laughs> so sprinkle is in use jQuery. No. A sprinkle is in insert a React component with no config, which is like yeah. what you've probably been wanting to do. Um, so that's really what we're getting. It's like sprinkles can be components. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of the pitch. You can have big sprinkles, small sprinkles, um, and and I guess uh, because it's in the it's in the context of of eleven e, but like even the project I work on, like uh, well, no, I have this more specific to your stuff, but like you can obviously sprinkle in some react or view or svelte but because because 11 d typically generates static html at the end of the day uh when you incorporate these components um i guess by default they'll just generate static html and it's and you need to opt in to say hey make me interactive or it's exactly that yeah um that's the astro model of like okay. you put on a little directive that says here's how i want to load the component load it when it scrolls into view load it when uh the page loads initially you kind of pick and choose how you want to ship javascript if at all um okay. and we do a similar thing where you can even write your entire page with jsx just like say index.jsx write out all your okay. html and by default it'll just turn into plain html and scope css maybe on the other okay. side, we support CSS modules and all that fun stuff. Um, but if you want to say like partially hydrate within that JSX yeah. file, we're coming up with cool solutions for that where you can use short codes inside of React. Um, okay. But the that that's kind of like the vision where you can use any mm -hmm. template that you want um, to write the static HTML. And okay. then when you want to opt in to little bits of that HTML that need a component alongside it, well, you just add a little hydrate flag that says okay. hydrate this bit of HTML with this component. Um, and for those unaware of what hydration is, it's kind of what I described there of um, you opt into shipping JavaScript alongside the HTML. And um, the way hydration works is like when you first load the page on the client, it will, yeah. um, you have a little JavaScript bundle that's loaded as a script tag and it sort of crawls through the page and looks for the bit of HTML that is associated with that component. So first we server render your component, we put it on the page. And then okay. at runtime, it says, oh, I remember that HTML. That came from the server. I'm going to attach this JavaScript component to that HTML to make the button okay. clicks do something. It's like slotting Lego bricks together. So yeah. that's kind of what we let you do, is choose how and when to add that little bit of JavaScript. OK, cool, cool. And, and I guess. One thing that's interesting about this too is, I, I don't want to sound cheesy, but because like the short mm -hmm. codes are, are functions, which is JavaScript. So you can be basically pass functions all around and, and kind of not, not that you have free reign, but you know, like, like for example, like a React component will receive props. So you could pass in a function that's not even necessarily, you know, cause it's just a prop. So you like, if you have some, some other code coming from somewhere and I, I haven't done any viewers felt myself, but I imagine 
view has the concept of props i think i i don't know about spell yeah. but uh yeah they're more strict in a way. Um, JSX is the most loose one of like, just chuck a function in here and you can run it. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and views like you need to type check your props and you need to be very specific. So that's kind of been a roadblock to like have this okay. ultimate use short codes anywhere, but it's very possible. Um, okay. Got it working late night on my computer. So I know it works in production. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, we'll ship, but once we we'll get there, it's like, yeah. Yeah, just oh use the laptop in prod. There you, you go. Need to test. The, yeah. Does the net, net no fly CLI deploy uh, laptops? You know, just like put laptop in cloud. Um, yeah, cool. Oh cool. my God, please. Just go to localhost. Yeah. <laughs> localhost is fine. Okay, well, this yeah. is like a, a really great intro to what the project is. Uh, you said you're working on some small, uh, some small issues at the moment. Like, um, um, I was wondering if you'd be down for maybe doing some live coding, like uh, I don't I don't mind uh, getting in the hot seat here and just uh, seeing what we can do. And for full disclosure, oh, yeah. for the folks at home, I've never done Svelte or uh, Slinkity, so we'll see how this goes, but I'm, I'm excited to have some fun here. Oh yeah, I mean, we'll explore the museum of component languages and just try to like edit them, see the live reloading, maybe add in a few assets and see how like Levity and Slinkity work together. Um, but oh. yeah, we'll we actually have a starter project that you can install to make it kind of easy to spin up. Okay, um, awesome. And I should ask uh, before we go: Do you have Windows or Mac? Uh, I do have Mac. Uh, cool. And, just making uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I got VS. I was going to do it in VS Code. That's my uh, favorite uh, editor. So, um, okay. Sounds good. Uh, I'm just going to go share my screen and just give me two seconds here. And we'll let the fun begin. Okay. Just one sec here. Okay. You should be able to see my screen there, Ben. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go to my editor here. Okay. So, uh, all I've done so far is I just created an empty folder uh, just so we can have the project here. So, um, yeah, I guess we Sounds can good. just go from here. Um, so uh, yeah. I leave it up to you to guide me now. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah. Uh, so we have an npm init command that we can use to like spin up a new project. And we okay. have a stable version of it that uh, just works with React at the moment. And then the Canary okay. version that unlocks our sort of plugin ecosystem. So we'll try the Canary version today. Okay. Um, so it is npm init slinkity. Okay. It's slinkity at Canary. Okay. Let's grab the Canary one. And, uh, and this will generate a nested folder inside of this folder, but you know, okay. that's just how it works. Uh, uh, so hit enter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. All right. Uh, let's go with, uh, I'll just do it again. Dev stream slinkity. Cool. And... and here you can choose if you even want components at all. Uh, it's a multi select. Oh, okay. So uh, okay. I suggest selecting all of them just okay. for the sake of a fun demo. But yeah. if you don't want to use any of them and you just want us to help your styles, then you can just skip it. Okay. Um, but yeah. If you hit enter, it should generate a little starter. Okay, cool, cool. So if I look um, on the side and, here, okay. And I know it says npm, but you can use yarn or pnpm, whatever you prefer. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna go into the folder instead here. Yeah. So we're not in inception mode here. Uh, okay, so that should be good. All right, cool. All right, so. I see it set up a few things here. Uh, so we've got our 11E config. So for folks who haven't done 11E, this is kind of like uh, where all things 11E get configured. Um, yep. It's gonna yep. Everything 11E specific. And, it, and we only set three a... defaults in there, but we leave a ton of comments so that uh, you know okay. exactly why it's there. You can remove all yeah, of it, yeah. technically. OK, cool, cool. All right, I got 32 files in here, really. What's oh okay? It's got fonts and stuff. Okay, I said it's all popped in here. Yeah, it's mostly the fonts actually. Okay, cool, cool. I might shrink this just a little bit. Okay, all right. So at this point, we've set up the starter project, like you mentioned. 
Uh, okay, so it even sets up a Netlify Tomo file. Okay, so okay, cool. Nice. Yep. Okay. All right. So at this point, um, how what should we be doing here at this point? Just starting up the st uh, starter site. Uh, I'd start by with a uh, npm install or yarn. Oh or yeah, yeah, whatever. That, that would help. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, we don't do it by default. Some tools do. Uh, just wanted to give some freedom because now there's like pnpm, yarn, npm. People have a yeah. ton of favorite package managers now. So if there's yeah, no exactly. lock file. Go crazy. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. So okay. So it uses parcel too. Or is that just a dependency of levity? Some, know. someone does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's probably a Vitism. Uh, I'm okay. I am curious actually, uh, what's involved there. Okay, cool. All right, so I did npm install. Uh, we've got all this here. Okay, uh, uh, oh, and I see it yeah. generated some temp uh, some template files too. Oh, yeah, we fine. can crawl the uh, the explorer to see what's going on here. Um, yeah. So, if you're curious, like, how do routes exist? In 11D, you kind of just throw all of your routes into either a source folder or the base folder. Okay. Uh, we set in the config, use the folder called source, but you can name it anything. Um, okay. So everything at the base of it is just going to be a page on our site. So you can see there we have a Svelte page, a view page, a markdown page, and they all just yeah. kind of work. Uh, you don't have to configure anything to use those, uh, yeah. except for a little... Uh, something in the Slinkity config that opts into using Svelte view. Okay. Um, cool. And then the includes folder is a lot like a components folder, if you've used that in Next.js or something like that. Um, it's yeah. a junk drawer with a different name is the way that I describe it. But this is where you can put layouts that you can strap onto your pages, as well as assets that you want to load in short codes. Cool, 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 yeah. And for those who might have never used uh, 11D, NJK is for nunchuck template files, uh, if, if folks aren't aware of that. Um, OK, and so yeah, so we've got yep. the uh, generated React component, Svelte, and view, um, uh, enable plugin, sure. Uh, OK. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of a... <laughs> yeah, I, little, I, little I, I, yeah. Little suggestions. Yeah, no, that's all good. I, I guess you're using. Are you using the recommended uh, plugins uh, in your project? Is that what it is? Uh, uh, actually, no. I think that uh, Svelte will just pop that up if you have the Svelte file extension. Um, okay, okay. Maybe if you had it installed before. And Vue, cool. yeah, we, we can install something to view this as well in Vue. But okay. I don't think we'll be writing a lot of Vue today because I'm actually new to it. This was the most yeah. complex component that I've written in Vue so far. Uh, it's a slinky <laughs> okay. that goes back and forth. We'll see it in a second. Um, cool, cool. But yeah, uh, Vue's cool. Okay. I, I'm okay. welcome to join this community for sure. Yeah. So uh, that's that's mostly everything. Okay. Yeah, I know. I, I've done a ton of React and Preact, so I, I'd be kind of mm -hmm. interested to look at the Svelte, uh, even though I've never done any. Yeah, that could be interesting, I think. I don't know. Wait, you up for maybe checking out something yep. with Svelte? Yeah, I'm good to guide on that. Um, okay, cool. I actually used to use Svelte uh, pretty regularly uh, just on like personal projects, but then kind of went back to React. Um, okay. Just because it's where I'm strongest, I guess, or where I've spent the longest. But there's something okay. about Svelte where it's like I've spent way less time using Svelte than React, but it always feels okay. more friendly every time I use it. So uh, yeah. I'd love to check that out. Um, yeah, cool, cool, cool. But if we spin up the dev server, we can see what this thing actually is. All right, cool. So I, I'm guessing that's just the npm run dev, or, or are we doing the, do we call it, are we do the slinkity commands, I guess, like 11 uh, We wired those up, but you can. Okay. We, we made it npm start because okay. it's just one less word to type. I don't know. Okay. This is the only reason I ever use start. Okay, cool. I have an alias, just npm run, it's nr. So, okay, so we got localhost 80 here. I'm, I'm in VS Code, so I'm just going to keep it all within VS Code just for now. Uh, oh. There's just so, uh, just to make it easier for us here. Very cool. Okay, so I'm going to just hide the terminal. 
Okay, so we got the site loaded up. So this is the, I like the design of this, by the way. It, I, it's really nice. I like the, yeah, the dark it's pink and purple. Cool, cool. Okay, so we ran the dev server. This has compiled the 11 e site. Um, at this point, anything we should be looking in here or where should we go to next? Um, I'm noticing that none of the short codes are appearing, uh, <laughs> which is a bit okay. odd. I don't know if it's this, uh, like, VS Code browser that's causing it. I, I'm i not sure. Okay. Let me check the um, browser real quick. Yeah, d let's just double check. Yeah. Because if it is, I'll just, it's fine. I'll just share. Okay, yeah, it is the browser. Okay, cool. Interesting. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. But okay, cool. Might be uh, a I think cross word is... thing. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to share my whole screen. I just got to move. I've got OBS on this screen. So just give me one second. I know. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. Don't sweat it. It's uh, I got a bigger monitor recently too. So it uh, it just causes things to... Uh, I had to readjust my whole OBS <laughs> setup because of it. Uh, okay. Oh, so man. let me put that there. And I'm just going to share my whole screen. So one sec here. Do, do, do. No, I'm not going to hang up the call. I will share my screens. Yes, this one. Screen one, go live. Yeah, I knew that was going to do Inception. That's OK. Uh, OK, hold on two seconds here. Do, do, do. All right. Yeah, we shouldn't be doing Inception anymore here. Give me a sec here. Yeah, I'm seeing it on the stream, Inception. Looking good. Okay, cool. We're okay now. Okay, I'm just going to bring yeah. in a browser over. Just one sec here. Du, du, du. Okay. All right. Okay, and that was oh, well, localhost 88. Okay, cool. Hooray. All right. we are um, back so there the they are. Uh, so here on the side, we have three slinkies rendering all together, each written inside of a different framework. So okay. uh, if you like click on each of them, they should all be interactive at the moment. Okay. Uh, yep. OK, cool. Cool. I like the animation too, by the way. All yeah, right. I spent awesome. far too long on that. But <laughs> it looks good now. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, if uh, if you open like the index.md, that's where we're sort of slotting in all of these uh, components. And okay. they're each using just percent sign syntax. This is uh, using nunjux, actually. We set it as a default for your markdown files. So mm -hmm. here we're just um, inserting each component using a shortcode named after the framework. So the name of the shortcode is React. We pass in the name of the component and then choosing to opt in to uh, hydrating it so that button actually works. So as you can see, you can like play around with it all you want. Um, OK. And I guess uh, you were talking about the hydration before. So if I remove mm -hmm. that parameter and come back here, OK, yeah, yep. so this is no longer interactive. OK, cool. Yes. And you also notice the button disappears uh, because yeah. hydrate is a prop. So inside the component, uh, okay. we can actually look for the prop and hide interactive elements if we want to. Uh, you you okay. can totally ignore the hydrate prop. I thought it was a kind of cool addition where it's like you can change the content depending on how the component is loaded. Um, okay, okay, yeah. But otherwise, it's just sense. statically rendered. Yeah. OK. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, OK, so uh, yeah, I guess at this point, OK, so we're just in a regular markdown file, and you know, we've got the these are the short codes. So React. So these are. This is kind of like the secrets. Well, part of the secret sauce is you've created a React short code, a Vue short code, and a Svelte short code. I imagine. Yep. And uh, yeah. you can register plugins that can name what the short code is. So I can like register lit element as a short code, and then okay. I can get access to Vite to say, here's what I want to put onto Vite, so Vite understands lit element. Here's how I server okay. render it. Here's how I can hydrate it on the client if I have that behavior set up. Uh, you can okay. do whatever you want, really. So yeah, these are the ones that are like uh, pre-installed at the moment, but you could mm -hmm. 
set up your own even inside of your own project without making a package. Okay. Yeah, I could see because uh, we use preactive forums, so like on Dev two and stuff. It'd be interesting to see like uh, Preact has a compatibility mode for React, so I wonder if you could just mm -hmm. drop in, replace it, uh, or if you would just need to create a a separate shortcode. But I feel like it would probably just work with the React shortcode. But... Yeah, we actually had a community member uh, who created an example version of just rewriting with Preact. And okay. that was before our plugin setup existed. So it might be a little bit different once we set it up now, but they are okay. working on a Preact official shortcode so that if you don't want to use compat mode and you want to use like Preact as designed, uh, you okay. could just slot it in and just stop using React if you want to do that. But of course, like people are fighting over who uh, transforms this JSX file. So we got to be careful about like, if you use Preact, Solid, and React all in the same project, like yeah. we got to resolve that <laughs> a little that's bit true, smarter. Uh, but here yeah. it's like different file extensions, it works great. So yeah, as long as you're not fighting over JSX, you can use anything. Okay, cool. I'm just, uh, you're getting a shout out in the crowd for your whiteboard. So I'm a fan of that whiteboard too. So uh, Mr. Trimble says, hey, there's that whiteboard. Okay, oh, yeah. cool. So you know it's my ride or die. <laughs> so from okay, here cool. so, uh, yeah 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 go ahead no go ahead sorry um i mean i was just gonna suggest anything else we could explore but uh what were you gonna say oh i was just gonna say it'd be fun to kind of just uh build something out these are like the out of the box ones the like the the examples um, but I'm, I'm wondering if we could maybe either tweak one or maybe uh even uh just build something new. I guess uh, if we look at this Svelte stuff, like I said, I haven't really done any Svelte myself. I uh, had like a small demo when Switch was on the stream, but it looks, uh, what, what I'm seeing looking at this briefly is it's it's one file and it, and it kind of, it just looks like a regular HTML file uh, to some degree, mm -hmm. you know, you got your script tag, uh, this well, this markup here, and then there's a style tag, and I imagine this is scope CSS that happens here with uh, Svelte. Uh, yeah, yeah. So first off, you can choose what language it is. We used SCSS to uh, uh, generate that slinky animation, but okay, okay, yeah, and it is scoped. So when you create Slinkity container and apply it inside of that HTML, it'll put on a little like Svelte class to make it scoped. Okay. Um, and it'll do the same compiled output if you don't hydrate it. So okay. it's uh, just their setup for things. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be fun to just kind of maybe build out one. Uh, you think we could do that? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. So uh, I actually have some like example data if we want to go crazy okay. yeah, um, yeah. with just like uh, putting some data on the page, maybe generating routes. I know that uh, takes a second, but I've okay. memorized the syntax now because it's quite complicated. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, let's do that. Uh, yeah, let me just, uh, can I DM you on Discord a little uh, yeah. link to a repo? Yeah, no problem. Do -do -do. You can, uh, there's a dev stream chat channel. You can drop it in there if you want. Or, or oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. It's all good. DM is good. Okay. So I'm going to copy that link. Just so all the folks can see. Yeah. Oh, oh funky. It's... No, no, no. Oh, it's, it's doing it's... one of those links? Yeah, it's like, I, I, should, oh, I need shoot. to copy the text instead. Google does that too. Like if you if you right click on a a, a link in the in Gmail, it even mm. though the the text of the link says it, it's the actual link, it always goes through Google first. But okay, uh, let me zoom this Oof. in a bit here so folks can see. Okay, yeah. So, so this is just like a data dump of things that we can drag and drop into our project if we want to. Uh, you okay. can be free to like just clone this into the folder we already have open. And just kind of, okay. uh, I can direct you on like where to put certain things. Um, okay. Mostly just so looking just... to get that data folder. Yeah. Okay. I'll just do a clone and it'll go in a subfolder, but. Uh... 
Uh, oh, there's no, why is there no SSL? Uh, oh. Not SSL, SSH. Yeah. Okay, well, whatever. I've got, I've got the GitHub CLI installed anyway, so. Okay, cool. It's That's a cool suggestion. That. Yeah. It's weird though. It's uh, normally GitHub shows you uh, SSH too. Okay. Yeah, uh, I heard they so. were deprecating something with SSH. Oh no, I still have okay. that. Oh, huh. I don't know. Okay, so maybe it's permission. Open this. Okay, we should have. Okay, here's the reference here. Let's go back to here. Okay, so we've got the data mm -hmm. folder here. You want me to drag that into the source folder, I guess? Yeah, sure. Okay. And of course, it's not going to. Why are you not? Huh. Weird. I don't know. It's a we're we're live streaming, so of course it's not going to do it perfectly. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so cool. the other thing is, uh, since you're using V, I'm definitely noticing uh, very fast refreshes. Uh, so. Yeah, cool. uh, it's definitely a, just a tick faster than like eleven D's browser sync setup, and depending on what you're editing, you can get hot module reloading too. Uh, we want it everywhere, but right now, like if you edit style files, it'll just instantly reload. Uh, without okay. even refreshing the browser. So it's like, ooh, it doesn't have to recompile. Um, nice. But yeah, this is just a, a data dump of a bunch of t-shirts that we might sell in an e-commerce experience. Uh, and it's just the name of the t-shirt, a slug if you want to generate a page for that, um, and okay. a set of images to show the front and back. So um, okay. also, before we move on, do you mind... Um, actually, no, let's go with it. This is good. Oh, I'll need to copy the assets uh, folder, I guess, or, or is that? Uh, yeah, I misnamed it when I wrote this, uh, but take all of those images there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you take like the contents of that folder actually, or this will work. Cool, all right. And... Very cool. And then we can paste that into an underscore assets folder inside of here. Yeah. Go. Cool. All right. So we got all our stuff there. I'm just going to close up this one. Yep. We have data. Okay. We have stuff. And the last couple bits to do. Um, first off, in the 11D config, we need to teach it how to process YAML. Uh, sadly, not something it comes with out of the box. Okay. But uh, I just prefer it. Um, so what you uh, would need to do is install uh, JS dash YAML and. Okay. Uh, we can wire it up. Just YAML? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, so that's installed. Okay, cool. so now we got to wire it um, up. And yes. So uh, let, me, let me just guide on that. It's pretty easy to type. So okay. if you just import JS YAML as an unnamed import, Okay. Uh, so you mean like a default export? Or, yeah, just like const YAML equals yeah. require. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think yeah, you can use ESM. And I tried using ESM in 11 to you, the config the other day. Yeah. Okay, cool. It, uh, it's I've a shame. It, it's a big I've initiative for sure. I've, pilot here. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it got it uh, pretty well. Yeah. Don't need a. Cool, cool. Uh, so from here, we can add. A, another thing onto this 11 e config, it's uh, 11 e config dot add data extension. Okay. And the first argument is the string YAML to say, here's okay. how you process the wow. Is this, uh, yeah, go, uh, I'm not trying to. Uh, that's that's kill, right. Uh, I don't know if safe load pilot. is right, but yeah, do you use safe load, I guess. I, I don't know what that does. Uh, classic copilot okay. like What's looks right there? i don't yeah. know somebody did it in another uh, project must must be good ship it. someone did it yeah uh so now we're set up to load all of that um and okay. the second thing we need actually is a pass-through copy to put our assets folder inside of the uh the output so yeah, we okay. have an example of one here it's already copying over public so we can do um you, you could do underscore assets if you move it outside of source. I think that would make it a little bit easier. Okay, okay, just gotcha. Think, and no. just the assets folder, right? 
Yeah. Okay, cool. Let me just fix that there. Do, do, do. Yes, no. Yes. Right. And if anyone's watching, like, that's some manual work to do. By design, yes, it is. Uh, 11D doesn't really help you with much. Like, it doesn't care about where your assets live. You tell it what the assets are. Uh, it doesn't care about yeah. YAML. You have to teach it YAML. Um, but okay. if you have a config you take around everywhere you go, it's kind of okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No. But yeah, a lot of freedom. Freedom, for sure. Okay. Cool, so cool. we should right, be good. So, yeah, so I can start up the dev server again, I guess? Yeah. Okay, and then we come over here. And we're, shoot, oh, we're messing up some. Okay, let Let's me check just this out. See what it's complaining about. It's definitely in the config, I'm sure. Uh, yep, so change it to that. load. Okay. I, I don't think it's safe load. Ah, okay. uh, copilot. Yeah, oh, copilot. Take off the seat belt. Let's do this. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the eject. Here we yeah, go. Exactly. Now we're All good. Right, cool. cool. All right. So the lesson. Uh, so not much to change, there. of course. We just have yeah. data now. Um, okay. But because it's in our data folder, it's accessible to all of our pages. So um, okay. actually, double uh, if you click on underscore site, that's our build output. Uh, just to yeah. verify that it's like copying over the assets. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Right. So cool. Nice. that's all password copy does, really. Um, yeah. So we have those. Okay. And um, to use the data, I'm thinking we, we could either write a page with Svelte, or we can insert a short code here that renders our t-shirts. Um, okay. Oh yeah, why don't we do that? Uh, yeah. So I'll just delete these here, just to, I'm just gonna give us a bit of room in here. So shout out to the details component. Yay, team semantic. Yes. All right. Lost art. Cool, cool. Okay, so I don't know, maybe I'll just call this t-shirts. Sure. If I, knew how to, if I knew how to spell, or is that, is that GitHub Copilot misspelling for me on purpose taunting me okay i think that was you yeah that was me he's trying to be trying to be nice it was nick <laughs> our uh, github yeah. overlords yeah exactly cool cool uh okay so uh i for the uh short mm. uh for the component i'm just going to put it right here okay, uh you and... actually need to put it inside of includes oh, is the oh, way yeah, we have sorry. it set up yeah cool. All right. Yes. Thank you. VS Code. Okay. So, from what I saw in the other one, we need a script tag. I've got fat fingers today. Uh, we need a style. And wh what was it? The attribute was it Lang? Oh, Lang S C S S. Okay. Uh, if you want it, we can go without it. Yeah. Okay. We can do. Uh, we'll go old. Not old school, but traditional. Okay. Okay, and then we'll have our markup here. Okay, so yeah, so I guess the first thing I is, uh, I know, like you said, when you when you add stuff to data in Eleven D, that you get a collection. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I guess this is a T-shirts collection that's available. Uh, yes, and you'll need to uh, since we're using a short code here you yep. sort of specify the prop and then pass it in. So at this uh, level, um, or we could start from here, yeah. Uh, if you want to pass uh, in t-shirts, it should be as simple as like comma, t-shirts equals t-shirts. Okay. And is this, uh, is this the typical syntax for passing in props for any of the shortcode? Yeah, yeah, this is actually a okay. nunjux thing where you can, okay. if you want to like create an object that you're passing to your shortcode, you can just say key equals value and it'll map okay. it to an object at the end. So okay, cool. if you want to write shortcodes for that syntax, it's pretty, pretty nice. Okay, cool. So All right, so we got this prop that's going to be coming in. So I should have that available here now. Yeah, um, so to expose it, you would say export let... Um, t-shirts and you can put a default value here if you want but not okay. necessary it's, uh, it's an array i imagine right yep okay cool all right and 
if I do a console.blog, or sorry, console.dir, t-shirts, mm. and reload, I should have it in my, oh yeah, nice, t-shirt. Sure oh, enough. Wait. It says t-shirts received an unexpected slot default. Yes, the these are safe to ignore. Um, okay. It's just, uh, we allow you to pass children to a shortcode as well. And when you don't okay. pass children, it's like, oh no, but ignore it. I don't know. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's a little aggressive, uh, but here are our yeah. t-shirts for sure. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, and, All right, so we're already in business. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, I'm just going to put business. the dev tools down below here. Okay, cool. All right, so I guess the next step is how do we wire up the, the data to uh, in Svelte? Um, yeah, so we'll probably want like a for loop to loop over all of them. And okay. the syntax for that is something that escapes me more than it should. I think it's uh, if you do, yeah, curlies and then a pound sign. Okay. Uh, yes, that. <laughs> Whatever oh, was wait, just then? there. No, uh, hit backspace. Copilot had an idea. Oh, okay. yes. Damn, Copilot. Except for this. Too. Don't use. Oh, you can use this? What? I guess the I guess the context of this Why? is the the particular item, but uh, I don't think this is. works. Uh, it's yeah, complaining it about works. the pound sign. Yes. So we're it wrapped it in double curlies. Change it to a single curly. Okay. Cool. And same down here. Uh, for the variable here, it's double curlies or still single curlies here. Yep. I think it's. Uh, I think Copilot was wrong actually. So on line nine, it should be each t-shirts as t-shirt. So then it okay. becomes a variable. That okay, kind of like a And then in your li, li, you can use it. Uh, okay, so I can do t-shirt dot, let's see what we have in there. Let's just do name to start. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so if we look in the browser there, I'm just gonna zoom in the browser for people at home, except I'm zooming in on the dev tools. <laughs> All right, cool. Good All right, so we got our, we've got our list here already. So uh, I guess first thing I, I would say is that this was pretty fast to do. Like, I know you're guiding me, but it, this seemed, uh, I mean, even though I don't really know Svelte yet, but it, it seemed yeah. pretty quick to wire up the data and then just render something. Uh, yeah. Okay. The nice thing about 11 is data is just floating in the air at all times and you can just kind of okay. say oh i want to put t-shirts in this thing and it's like yeah t-shirts exist so it was super easy to pluck it out of data and just uh slot it in so okay now we have these and um yeah another interesting thing is you actually saw that in your browser console because we hydrated the component but you can also okay. opt out of hydrating so that you don't ship any svelte JavaScriptiness alongside this list. Okay, got it. So let's let's test that out. So let's come back here, and I'm just gonna take off. I imagine even if I'm passing in props, it won't break. It'll it'll just know not to hydrate. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna save that. Okay. So very cool. So we still get the the statically generated, you know, uh, goodness. But there's no JavaScript available now. That's 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 pretty cool. Yeah, that's kind of like the thesis of islands, where it's like your island can have anything on it that you want, including JavaScript. So I was trying to come up with a metaphor there. Um, I'm sure yeah. there is one. But okay, yeah, you cool. have free reign over every little uh, little thing that you insert. So nice. from here we can do anything like add styles, show the images, etc. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we can do. Uh, well, we could even do. Uh, a, is there a link, or is it just image slug? Oh, okay. We could we could generate pages, I guess, right? Yeah. Let's. We can try generating pages for sure. Okay. Cool. So let me just add in here an anchor. Oh, oops. Okay. And it's slug. Okay. So if I go here and in Svelte. Can I still do curly brackets in the quotes or do you do something different? Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, slug. It's a qu optional quotes, basically. So if you come from okay. view, it's like kind of nice, but. Okay. Well, kind, like. kind of like in JSX too, when you're, if you yeah. have something that's not like a, a okay, so if I do this, 
Okay, cool. So, ooh, I like the style you have on this site. Uh, okay, cool. So we've got these links generated already. And if I hover over one, so yeah, so it's face the possum. Okay, cool. So I guess this gets to the next step you were talking about, which is how do we generate the route? Yeah, yeah. So we would create a new page to insert a sort of pagination setup. Um, okay. So inside of there, you can use anything you want. Um, mm -hmm. Svelte, JSX, view even, um, though I can't really help with that one <laughs> as much. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, would you prefer JSX or Svelte? No, we let's let's keep on the Svelte train. You know, it's a uh, it's fun to find something new. Yeah. Yeah. So under source, you can make um, it doesn't even matter what the file name is because we're gonna permalink okay. in a. But you can say like t-shirts dot okay. Svelte. Okay. And I guess is this something similar to like you know in it, it doesn't have a template in the name, but like you know in I don't know if you've used Next.js, but you can basically generate all these pages uh, with the static pass and it it just uses like that page as the template. I imagine this is the same idea kind of. Yep, exactly the same idea. Okay. Um, much different syntax though, for sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Because 11D is like that. But to do it, uh, all we need to do is add excuse me, some front matter to the page, okay. um, which is the way to specify like any data. So we do this as a JavaScript object. I would open sveltpage.svelte for a little example of how the syntax okay. works. Because we don't actually use the uh, like front matter fences. We let you. Oh, um, I'm in the wrong file. You said there, there's yeah. one called svelte page? Right? Yeah, svelte oh, okay. page. Yeah. And that's how you would do it here, where you create a script context oh, okay. module and export front matter. Um, which gives you some nice, um, like being able to use JavaScript to construct slugs and stuff like that, instead of having mm -hmm. to use like nunjuck syntax to do it, which is always hairier. Um, okay. So just chose to do it this way. But inside of our t-shirts, wherever it lives, oh, yes. Oh wait, did I read? Oh, I renamed. I named it the same thing. It's just. Oh, I just realized your I'm... tabs wrap. Oh. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a VS Code setting because wow. I was getting tired of the like huge like you know you had to kind of horizontally scroll which yeah uh, I don't okay cool so oh, I got this nice. chunk here so we've got our front matter which is equivalent to kind of like here um, mm -hmm. okay uh, except I got to click back on the right page okay so at this point um, yeah so what do we do here we're not we're obviously not going to use hard coded stuff here. Uh, yeah, so we'll like generate our title. So you can just okay. delete this for now, and we'll look okay. at how to do that in a second. Um, okay. And we don't need to hydrate it because it'll just be static content. And then okay, yeah. uh, the layout, I would recommend using layout colon layout just to apply um, that layout to the page. Okay, that's the one here. Okay. Yep. Do, do, do. I keep going to the wrong t shirts thing. Uh, Okay, and just add that in there. And this will have to be like this, I guess. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, so what we've kind of done here is we've generated a route called t-shirts at the moment because we're not paginating yet. Um, but in order to paginate, you can create an object called pagination. Okay. And this takes in definitely not that. Uh, yeah. sadly, I, I gotta, I gotta uh, it takes in copilot maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's trying to be clever, but it's never, I, I don't think it's ready for Svelte yet. I, I kind of yeah. noticed that maybe JSX is going to be a bit stronger. Um, yeah, yeah. but inside of here, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, you need a few keys. You'll first need, okay. uh, data colon and t-shirts in string. So this, so this is, is saying we're going to generate routes from the t-shirts array that we have available. And okay. then a size one, okay, which is like per page pretty much. Um, and then alias t-shirt. Okay. And that's going to uh, give us a, a nicer looking route when we do that. Is that what's going to happen? 
Uh, well, Alias sort of says, um, if I want to access attributes of the t-shirt, it's going to be on the oh, t-shirt okay. variable. Okay, so it's gotcha. mapping it, basically. You can look at this like a dot map kind of, uh, in okay. Get Static Pads. So we have all these, and the last piece to add outside of the pagination object is a permalink. And this will be the route that gets generated. Um, yeah. And this is an arrow function, actually. Oh, OK. Uh, it takes in data and then returns something kind of like that, actually. Um, <laughs> oh, it's exactly that. Wow. Yeah, oh, actually, no, it it's a little it. different. Data.tshirt.slug oh, is okay. what it would be here. Um, and so you'll need a trailing so slab, by the way. Okay. This bites me so often. Yeah, um, I or outside I, I, the curly. I forget who posted it. I, think, I, I never say his name right, but Zach uh, from Netlify, he's asking about the. I, I personally, I aesthetically yep. I don't like the ending slash myself. No, but uh, <laughs> but, it, but it's so weird when it messes up routes because you don't have it. It just always throws me. From yeah, me I know. All right, cool. I would like to get working without it, but that's how pagination works. So you got the permalink, you got everything you need. Um, and this should generate some pages for us. Okay, cool. So I'm going to save this. Okay, so now if I click on one. Okay. We get, okay. ooh, not quite. Okay. Uh, oh, that's because we permalinked it to t-shirts. Look at that. Uh, so we can oh, delete yeah, yeah. t-shirts if we want um, or update the links. Yeah, okay. So let's just try this though, just for fun. And Okay, cool. So it's the same the layout. layout. Um, which is why we see all this. OK. And then I guess at this point, we can do again. We could do like, I don't know. Uh, I guess, the, does the layout already have like a main section and everything? Uh, uh, it, ooh, I think it has a main, yeah. Uh, yeah okay. And it also I'll has a heading. It does. Um, so if you want okay. to generate the H1, we can write some more front matter to do that. OK. And I guess that yeah, and this one, the... yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it, it's like that. Yes, good job, Copilot. It's basically Copilot. that. Copilot. Yes. This is, it, this is <laughs> no longer a slinkity stream. It's a co it's a Copilot. Stream. Yeah, it's it's doing a good <laughs> job. Uh, yeah. But one little gotcha, you have to wrap the title in an 11D computed up. Okay. Uh, and you would normally have to do that for everything, but permalink is the exception. Um, so if you wrap that title in 11 e computed, it should generate the H1 for us. Like I've never used 11 e computed. Is that a function, or do you mean it's a syntax um, in the template? Yeah, so wrapping around the title key. So it's like 11 e computed colon object, okay. and then title inside of it. OK. like. Or, no, like, I mean like, in the, uh, I meant in the front. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. So yeah, right yeah. here, 11 to computed, you said? Uh, actually, outside of the title. So if you just, like, hit enter and put it, it's so hard to, like, describe. If you saw it. Yeah, yeah, know? no, it's all good. Oh, that. Of it's doing well, that. not that. But <laughs> kind of, kind of move, no, move line 10 inside there. Uh, that's, that's an interesting <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> OK, cool. All right. We did it. We I did hope. It. <laughs> OK, and then so here now, I should be able to output the title just by saying title, or do it because it's already wrapped, like the data.tshirt.title? Um, so actually, what we did there is uh, passed it up to the layout. So the layout uh, oh, adds okay. the h1 tag. So that oh, part's taken oh, care okay, of for okay. us. OK. So yeah, and it also sets the uh, browser title. So should I do both? Ooh, maybe we're missing something. Hmm. Funny. Huh. Did I get that right? Let's see, 11 uh, Where's last time? There's no errors in the console. Yeah, so if you check out layout.njk, can you check what it's doing with that? Yeah. OK, so it's title. Yeah, it's title. Huh. Okay. Uh, can you try hard coding title to just like a value instead of a function? Um, or inside the Svelte file. Yeah. Okay. One of my favorite words. 
Hmm. Oh, it's one of these situations. Uh, uh, classics. This is a I don't funny. Know what that is. <laughs> this is a funny eleven debug where it inserts the HTML of the page as a uh, <laughs> as a title, kind of. Um, okay. There's there's a way to. F- oh, I you're right. I would need to check my notes tab. on this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this isn't right. Um, this is an eleven D thing, and okay. I'd need to check how I resolved this last time because there's a way to do it. Um, but if you just delete eleven E computed title, we should stop seeing the weirdness. <laughs> the very- yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, shoot. Yeah. Good note to self okay, to investigate yeah, yeah. that on Svelte files. Cool, cool. And also for folks who might just be tuning in or, or tuned in a little later, we're actually using a Canary version of Slinkity right now. So yes. uh, just just throwing that out there. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, so I guess let's not worry about the title for now just because of the bug there. Uh, but even though semantically it's adding two H1s, let's, can we just, can I access it? Oh, I got to put it back actually if I do. One sec. You can access though. Um, you actually don't need to put it back. Uh, it should oh, just okay. exist, I think. Okay, so if I just do... As teacher.name. Okay. Oh, yeah. Teacher.name, except it's reshirt. I do. Okay, so... And is that... Is it double squigglies or one squiggly? Uh, oh, this is a... This is a svelteism for sure, um, okay. where we actually need to make a script tag and declare it as a prop in order for Svelte to say, yes, that oh, is okay. a prop. And this is a separate script tag from the context module, right? Yes. So context okay. module is to like export objects from a component, okay. and script tags are for everything else, pretty okay. much. So I have to do an export let again? Is that what it? Yeah, export let t-shirt. OK. And we won't, I mean, I, I guess I could put a default value, sure. OK, so if I save this now. OK, nice. So we've got the title. And uh, let's see, what else do we have again here? Uh, did I, I think I disabled the, where is it? The index, where was, it? oh no, we still got hydrate. Oh, it's because I'm not console. Oh no, my console door is still. Oh, the. Okay, no, it's on the other page. Hold on a sec. I on just the other see page. The data. And yeah. uh, we are not hydrating yet, so this will pop up in the server console if any. Okay, so let me open that. Okay, so I see it here. Okay, I'll yep. just drag that up a bit. Okay, so we got the name, we've got some images, and we got the slug. Okay, so. I guess at this point we could do another for loop for images. Um, so let's just, I'm not necessarily going to make this all super pretty right now, but uh, what was the oh, sure. syntax again? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that guy. Okay, and we'll come back here. Oh, oops. And this time we're doing images as image and this should be t-shirt dot images i imagine and all right and then let's just add image and then we're going to do src we'll give some alt uh okay well it needs alt text but i'll, I'll worry about that in a bit uh okay so yeah. i'm gonna say image dot what was it uh, uh i think it's just the image is the source okay. yeah yeah okay gotcha so we can just do this and if i save that okay awesome so we got two possible shirts all right let's just do uh i'm being a little dirty here but well, we can use a style tag for that, but yeah, that's true. That's yes. true. let's do that. All right, so yeah, so I can use scope CSS in here now with Svelte, right? Yes, uh, you can actually target the UL without even making a class name, and it'll like scope oh, okay. it. I mean, that's like not good practice, but kind of cool yeah, yeah. if you're just trying to like prototype something, uh, and you don't even yeah. need lang by the way. It'll just like okay. Yeah. Work. 
Okay, let's just add this for fun. I'll say class equals t-shirts. Let's say dot t-shirts. We'll say list style. Oof. None. Okay, we're still good there. And then I guess uh, we could do, we could even do display flex. Okay, and, it's where, and let's put a gap, one rim, just to make it a little nice. Okay, cool. So it's pretty neat. So, okay, uh, I think I'm gonna have to check out Svelte too. I'll have to, since my site's already in 11D, maybe I should uh, just port it to uh, Slinky. <laughs> Yeah, you can just like gradually start using Svelte or start using whatever. Like, yeah. at least for me, I'm hoping this is the last framework I need to rebuild my personal site. Or like, okay. if I get the itch to try a cool new framework, like, I can just make one route and slowly migrate over if I want to. Instead of saying, yeah. let's learn Svelte Kit or something like that. It's just like, it's all available. Yeah, yeah, I know for sure. I did have one question about Slinkity because you're saying like right now it's building with V. Uh, the way I have my Lemony set up because I'm using Andy Bell's Hilia template because I'm not a designer and mm -hmm. I, I'm that kind of person that will spend five days trying to figure out what font to use for my site and never get anything done. So I went with his template. <laughs> but uh, yeah, our new uh, is does Eleventy out of the box now use V or is this is just something that you've plugged in with Slinkity? Yeah, this is uh, Eleventy does not. Uh, it doesn't have a bundler at all, actually. Um, where like the examples were saying use rollup, and now yeah. um, I think rollup's even been deprecated for Vue. Like it, they are making the switch hard. So this is just okay. slotting onto the uh, Eleventy browser sync server, and Vite is acting okay. as a middleware to sort of like intercept and manage the live reloading. Oh, okay, um, okay. And then production builds, we do like a full on like rollup build of what Eleventy okay. outputs. So it's a two-step build process now. Okay, that's cool, cool, cool. All right, so, okay, so this is really cool. So if I come, let's just kind of like a recap what we've done here so far. So uh, we created, we used the Svelte short code so we can use Svelte. Um, the, the way you reference the component is by the file name. Um, we can pass in some props here. Uh, I'm curious, like when you're passing in props, can you pass in an like because props is typically an object that has properties um say t say for this particular component i wanted to pass in two props would i make this an object then or does uh the way slinkity work it just parses all the all these props after and it just knows to group them as an object or it's that one. Yeah, it's like a spread okay. operator, really, where you just keep saying comma key value, and then they all uh, just okay, slot okay, in as props okay. at the end. Mostly because okay. it's hard to declare objects in Nunjux and in Liquid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this seemed like the easiest way to do it without like assign variable, whatever. Okay, okay. Um, so, cool, yeah. cool, cool. All right. And then, yeah, and then we've got the eager. I, I like how this is so easy to just turn on and off. The, uh, so like if I save this again, and then like if we look over here, it's just server side rendered. I, I think that's super cool how easy it is to just turn on and off on a component level. Um, and, I, and I guess you made that dis I'm just reaching here, but did was that decision made because like you didn't want to say you're all in on like completely static and like you really want it to be granular in the sense that like most of these components, sure, I, I, I want them server side rendered, but there's just a couple I want to tweak to be a hydrate. And that's, I guess that's the reason versus like a global kind of like hydrate or not hydrate. Yeah, pretty much. Um, where it's nice to have an opt-in model because most developers just stick with defaults. I forgot what the survey okay. was, but it's like 80% of people stick with defaults. So it's like, let's make the default the thing that ships less. And then you okay. have to opt in to ship more. Um, and yeah, you can yeah. also choose like modes on that as well. We didn't really get to it, but like you could say hydrate lazy. So it only okay. hydrates when you scroll it into view, like, and we'll add a bunch more as we go here, okay. but just like being very, uh, deliberate about when the JavaScript loads, if at all. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, and I guess, uh, 
we're, we're getting close to time here. Uh, this, this has been really cool checking all this out. Uh, I'm just going to drop a link to Slinkity again. Um, I guess what's, what's the status of the project right now in terms of like, is this something that's already production ready or is this still like, you know, definitely try it out, but not ready yet. Or, or is it really, you know, just push it in prod and YOLO and we're all good right now. Yeah. Uh, you can YOLO if you want, uh, the canary <laughs> build definitely not ready. Um, and we yeah, still yeah. put warnings on our site that this is an early alpha mostly because yeah. I mean, I'm kind of new to maintaining this kind of project and I want to be very okay. deliberate about announcing like now's the time, put it into everything. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll personally be putting it into as many like production ready sites as possible to see the rough edges. But yeah, yeah we're still working towards like um, supporting 11 serverless, for example. That doesn't quite work. Um, okay. Documenting any quirks that you might have moving from 11 to 11 with Slinkity. Um, mm -hmm. And a few other just uh, like component frameworks that are missing, like Preact and Solid. So once we work those out, uh, I'd definitely like to hit uh, sort of 1.0 beta release. Um, not going to promise any timeline, but yeah, yeah, that's what this year is for. How about that? Uh, maybe by yeah, end exactly. of the year, it's like super solid 1.0. But for now, okay. just encourage you to try it out and sort of see how it works on your existing sites. Okay. And in terms of the, uh, so like you were talking about like getting other frameworks in there, like solid JS, which I haven't used myself. I think that's like a, a newer react like API is, is that right? Or I'm not sure. Yeah, it is. Uh, I tried it out recently, uh, cause the creator, uh, Ryan has been very vocal in the islands architecture space because they have a new framework okay. and they don't have like the next JS for solid. So they're sort of seeing this okay. space like, oh shoot. We don't need to make our own. We can just make a plugin and work inside yeah. of Astro, Slinkity, and anyone else who does something similar. Um, okay. So, yeah, Solid is React, but smarter about re-rendering and more lightweight, okay. I guess, is the takeaway there. Uh, I think it's worth yeah. exploring for sure. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a second. Just the way I'm set up today, we'll end up sure. with Inception, unfortunately. Okay, there yeah. we go. Um, yeah, uh, just a couple more questions. Like, uh, like you said, you're new to kind of maintaining a project like this. Um, if, if somebody was interested in creating a plugin for like another framework, or even if, you know, somebody makes their own framework at some point, are there, is there a template or some kind of guidelines in the project yet on how to write your own plugin or is that kind of in the works or, mm -hmm. uh, in the works, you can do it mm -hmm. on our Canary branch. It's like main canary-0.6, which will be the release uh, when we okay. uh, work out one final bug with React, as I mentioned there. But once it's up, uh, we have we want to host all of these renderers inside of our mono repo setup. So like if you okay. want to make the Preact plugin, we'd encourage you to like open a PR on our project and say, like, let's introduce this package and start publishing it. Um, nice. Or you can make your own and just publish it independently. We won't judge, of course. Um, <laughs> but we're doing it for like, you know, have one friendly slinkity umbrella where it's like, I know that's the one. Um, yeah, but yeah. yeah, all of the existing plugins are templates. We wrote a TypeScript type that explains what each and every field is supposed to be for. And okay. I'd like to add a little section to our docs as well about like actually using it and setting the right flags in the right places. So okay. a lot of documentation work ahead, I would say, but it should be approachable for sure, especially if you're coming from Astro. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very cool, similar. Cool. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about this. This is really cool. Like, especially since I already have a site in 11D, uh, it'll be fun to explore this because I hadn't, I haven't added anything interactive to my 11D site yet. The only, I think the only active JavaScript I have is like, I have a, light and dark theme which you can set with just css but to persist it there's just this small bit of script that runs right. just to pull it out of local storage um but uh, yeah no it'd be interesting to to be able to add some interactiveness it kind of kind of makes me think of like you know people using mdx where they wanted react components you know uh it's not exactly the same thing i know but uh no this will definitely be a, a cool way to do things um I dropped the link to the project yeah. and also 
I dropped if if folks aren't already following Ben, I dropped his Twitter and also you can check out his website. Uh, I love the aesthetic of your website as well, by the way. I really wish I was a designer because uh, it's uh, <laughs> anything I I can I can take designs and build it, but like on my own, it's like oh, it it takes forever and it still doesn't look that great. Uh, but anyways, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, I guess one other thing, like since the project somewhat new but like are you looking for contributors right now or are you still kind of like in a build it kind of stage and i feel like if you're in the build it stage you should have contributors is kind of how i've uh, approached it because yeah. for example i'm new to view but i need to support it yeah. in this project so i learned just enough to get like a nice canary release going but of course i would yeah. want community support across all of these renders that we're supporting um and we yeah. put a ton of time into the contributing guide like read through all the contributing guides in the community and chose the best pieces okay. of all of them to put it together. Uh, so if you want to learn like, how do I run your linter? How do I run Slinkity against a local project? Because that's something that uh, framework authors never fully explain. We have a setup for you. Okay. Um, so yeah, made it as friendly as possible. And we also mentioned our Discord channel in the um, in the contributing docs as well. So you can follow that link. We're on the 11D Discord, actually. We're just a channel okay. within it. Uh, but that's our forum to like just shop, talk, uh, talk about ideas that we have, and maybe log issues if we're not sure that they should be a GitHub okay. issue yet. Um, trying to make it very approachable, of course. So if you want to yeah. contribute, oh, awesome. we're ready for it. Cool, cool. And yeah, and for folks that may be interested in contributing, it's a it's a great way to, you know, uh, if you're into open source, uh, it's a great way to get some really, you know, uh, high impactful contributions too, you know, cause it's still kind of early days, you know? So, uh, I'm yeah. definitely going to check it out for sure. And uh, I see, uh, I see Anthony AGC web dev in the, in the chat there. I feel like he's probably, or will contribute something. <laughs> so he, uh, he's, cool. he's our maintainer. Um, yeah. Oh, he is. Of, okay. I didn't uh, know that. Hopefully several. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, been super vocal about just like, you know, reviewing PRs, sharing out our updates and everything. Um, a slinkity stan for sure, trying to start that trend. Awesome. But yeah, All right. anyone jump in for sure. Cool, cool. Well, I uh, just want to say thanks again, Ben, for coming on. Uh, yeah. And, and shout out to uh, Ben's whiteboard because uh, I love that thing. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be sure to check out Ben on Twitter yeah. and his site, like I said. And uh, just a heads up, next week we've got uh, Demetrius Clark from Netlify joining us. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about all things community going on there and who knows what else. And uh, yeah, oh, tr Trust Code says awesome stream. Thanks, man. Um, nice. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so take care, everybody, and we will see you next week.